This is the first of three videos reviewing general relativity in a bottom-up fashion, which I personally think is less confusing. This first video looks at two-dimensional space as being made of pixels and curvature as what happens when your pixels don't quite fit in a nice grid. We'll see two ways of thinking about curvature. The surface can live in a third dimension or it can deform inside two dimensions. This video also sets the stage for later videos where we look at the building blocks of space-time in three and four dimensions, then analyze black holes, wormholes, and the expansion of the universe. Let's get started. General relativity tells us that space-time is curved. What does that mean? Well, there are two very different ways of looking at it. But before we look at curved space-time, let's look at curved space without time. And before we look at a curved surface, let's look at a flat surface, that is, a plane. A plane is a two-dimensional surface with coordinates x and y. We'll now show a couple of things that are trivial on the plane, but not so trivial on a curved surface. First, we ask how to draw a straight line. We have this cart, and later we'll think of it as a particle. There are two wheels connected by an axle, and the two wheels are the same size, and they rotate at the same speed. And then, of course, the cart moves in a straight line. It drops little crumbs that leave a trail so we can see the path. Now, if one wheel rotates faster than the other, the cart will turn. And if one wheel is bigger than the other, the cart will also turn. And you could imagine that depending on where the wheels are on the plane, the sizes change. But for now, let's not do any of that. Let's just go straight. If you want two parallel lines, simply use two carts that point in the same direction. On a flat surface, they stay parallel forever. Also, let's make a square. To make a square, we use sticks of the same length. Put one stick horizontally, then another at 90 degrees. Then, at the initial point, put one stick vertically, then another at 90 degrees. And there, you have a square. Now, we have put things on the plane, like the cart, sticks, and we could have a person living there, but they stick out in the third dimension. We should really think of them as living in the plane, as if they were made of the same material as the plane. As for the plane itself, we can think of it as being made of pixels. Pixels are the building blocks of two-dimensional space. Each pixel is one unit long in the x and y directions. Note that the pixels make a nice square grid. But what would happen if we had an extra pixel in the middle row? and we want to fit that into the same rectangle. That is when we get curvature. Well, there are two ways we can fit the extra pixel. First, we can simply deform the pixels in the middle row, shrink them along the x direction. We no longer have a nice uniform grid. Let's do that again, but let's look at what happens if we have objects in our surface, like the sticks. Since they are in the pixels, or are made of pixels, they also deform. The second way of fitting the extra pixel is to let all pixels keep their size, but buckle out in the third dimension. When we add the sticks, we see that the pixel areas stay about the same. Now let's look at a spherical surface, like the surface of a planet. A sphere is a two-dimensional surface that curves around in a three-dimensional volume. We say that the surface is embedded in a higher dimensional space, two dimensions inside three dimensions. Note that the surface is only the skin of the sphere, and the empty volume inside is not part of the surface that we study. Next, we want to draw a straight line on the sphere. But what do we mean by a straight line on a curved surface? Well, as before, we can define a straight line to be the path of a cart. That line is called a geodesic. On a sphere, the geodesics exactly cut the sphere in half, just like the equator on Earth or any meridian. In relativity, objects are moving gravity and feel no other forces follow geodesics. Now, on the plane, we saw that two carts that point in the same direction remain parallel. But this is not the case on a curved surface. 
these two cards start out parallel at the equator, but when they move north, they get closer and finally collide. Another thing that differs from the plane is when we try to make a square from straight sticks. Put one stick along the equator, then another pointing north. Then at the initial point, put one stick pointing north, then another going west. It doesn't work. The endpoints don't line up, and the final angle is larger than 90 degrees. Now the sticks don't look straight to us, because we watch from the third dimension. But inside the surface, they are straight, because they lie along geodesics. So that was one way of looking at a sphere, that it's embedded in a volume, with pixels all the same size. But just like with the grid that we saw before, we can avoid the third dimension. We can deform the pixels into a plane, as if we wanted to make a map of the world. For example, we could press down on the northern hemisphere, then rip a hole at the south pole and pull up the southern hemisphere. There are many ways to make a flat map from the sphere, but you always end up with some distortion. If you look at the pixels that make up the sphere, they are all about the same size and shape. Here we highlight some of the pixels with white. Look at the white pixels on the flat map. Some are very distorted, stretched long and thin. The building blocks of space are no longer uniform. We can now look at what happens to the geodesics that the cards created, the straight lines in the shape of circles. In the map, the yellow geodesic is not quite a circle and the crumbs have been deformed and they are spaced differently at different locations. We can also add some sticks to the sphere. Think of the sticks as pieces of geodesics, straight pieces of lines. On the sphere, they are all the same size. But if we think of the sticks as being made of pixels, it makes sense that they too should stretch and bend. And they do. On the flat map, these sticks change in size depending on where they are located and also depending on the direction they are lying in. Remember that on a sphere, we cannot make a square from straight sticks. On the map, we cannot make a square of crooked sticks that think they are straight. Even though the map is flat, it represents a curved space. If you were that flat guy inside the surface, you would think that the sticks are straight because you are made from the same distorted pixels as the sticks. And just to complete the picture, here are the lines that are parallel at the equator, but only at the equator. On the map, they never look parallel because of the distortions. There is an old riddle. If everything doubles in size, including you, would you notice? Well, no, you wouldn't. You double in size, your measuring stick doubles in size, and the things you measure double in size. What we have is something similar. If you deform and your stick deforms and the things you measure deform, you will not notice. This is a kind of conspiracy of nature, similar to what we saw in the video on special relativity. And if things change in size as you move from one region of space to another, you would not notice anything locally. You might notice if you compare things far apart, for example by making a large square, as we saw before. But locally, where you are, you will not notice. With that in mind, let's return to our cart. Remember that on the sphere, which is not distorted, the wheels are the same size and the cart moves along a great circle. But when we make a flat map, pixels and sticks change in size, and so do the wheels on the cart. We saw before that when the wheels are of different size, the cart goes in a circle. And that's exactly what happens. The cart believes that it's going straight, and it does follow a geodesic. This is why we can think of the cart as a particle. It is not an infinitely small point. It has a little bit of width, so we can sniff out the environment and notice if things change, if there is a gradient. So we have seen two ways of thinking about curved space. We can have a two-dimensional sphere embedded in a three-dimensional volume, or we can get rid of the third dimension and deform the pixels, which are the substratum of space. Is one better than the other? Well, both are accepted viewpoints. Richard Feynman has a lecture on what he calls a hot plate, where the size of objects depend on temperature. His hot plate is the flat map that we have seen, 
I recommend checking out his lecture. Kip Thorne likes to use both. He writes, physicists can and do use the two viewpoints interchangeably. Which viewpoint tells the real truth is irrelevant for experiments. In this video series, I prefer the second viewpoint, where the pixels of a substratum bend and stretch. I find it much easier to visualize and get a gut feeling for what's going on, as we'll see later. It also fits nicely with quantum mechanics. In the next video, we look at curvature in three and four dimensions, and also at the Schwarzschild spacetime. I'll see you there! For more videos, go to physicsisnotweird.com. And I'm Aiden Bernander.